because I know we're winning. <laughs> may not look like it all the time, but we are. So I want to talk to you just for a couple of minutes or a few minutes today for how to navigate time because um, I did a study umpteen years ago. I can't remember how long ago it was, maybe 40 years ago or 45 years ago. I know that dates me, but whatever. But um, anyway, on the ites in the Old Testament, and I don't remember which one of these dudes, but one of them was called the busy ites, the busy people. So we have demonic forces that actually set against us that keep us so busy we can't think straight. And you can find it yourself. I don't remember. I don't think it was the Hittites or the Amorites, but it was one of those Ike guys. And uh, but their their plot was to keep everybody busy. Does that say anything to you? So we have to learn how to navigate time, and we have to learn what is most important in our timing, and how to navigate that time because we waste a ton of time and we don't even realize it. And so. I'm not telling you to get legalistic, but I'm telling you to start watching yourself. Like we were just getting ready to go on the air here. And last time I looked at my watch, it was about an hour and 20 minutes ago. I was going so fast in the last hour and 20 minutes. I, it seemed to me like five minutes. And so what we do is we don't realize how much time we actually waste. And so now time is very, very important because we're actually in a fight with the ancient of times. That's the devil himself, because he thinks he can get in there and navigate and mess around Daniel 7.25, and he can get to where he can change time so time suits him. Now, you need to keep that in mind. And so Daniel 7.25 explains it. He thinks, this is an Amplified, he thinks to change times and laws. So his thing right now is everybody be busy, busy, busy running here, doing this, doing that. And you think you're accomplishing a lot, but you know what you find out at the end of the day? You haven't really done very much. If you do a things to do list and you look at the end of the day, if you added up how much time you wasted, I wasted in one day, you would be shocked. And so my the thing that the Lord helped me with, this is way back years ago. In the 70s, the Lord helped me to understand. He said, just think about Pastor Cho in Korea. He's with the Lord now. But back in those days, he was building his church and went on into the 80s. And, and I was privileged and honored to be able to be in some of his meetings when he came here in this nation. That man had the same 24 hours we did, but he was pastoring people of hundreds and of thousands. He was pastoring churches all over the place. Then eventually he was pastoring churches of a million people. They had the same amount of time as you and me. And then how did that guy get all that done in one day? So what we've got to see is we have people that do this and do that. And they're able, just look at when President Trump was in there. And he went to bed, they said, every night about midnight. And he was up at 5 o'clock every morning. But he got a bunch done in a day. So we look at these people that um, some of them have discovered. Scientists, have, they've spent their time discovering some of these amazing cures for health and different things. Well, they have the same amount of time as you and I do. A governor of a state, the same amount of time. But yet we look at ourselves and go, good night. <laughs> what in the world have we done in a 24 hour day? So I want you to be time conscious, not to get under condemnation. You understand what I'm saying? But to be a good steward of your time. Because we have got to buy back time now. Just like Hezekiah, we got to get some time back. Just like Joel too, we got to get some time back. We got to have restoration of the years that canker worm and the locusts have eaten away. Because we have gotten, I don't know, maybe not everybody, but kind of in the United States, is like, let's just you know, let's have fun and let's go movies and let's go out to eat and let's go to ball games and this and that and the other. And we don't even realize, and there's nothing wrong with those things, but we don't even realize the next thing you know, we wake up one day and we're 80 years old and we go, wow, what happened to that time? And so God wants us to realize that we're at a very crucial, crucial, crucial time right now. Very important. If you go back and study the, the, the story of Joseph, when Pharaoh came to Joseph and Joseph had the understanding of, of the dream, when Joseph was, um, I think it's in the Amplified Bible, the Pharaoh said, 
there were five things he said. He said, how could I find a man? Now look, listen at me. And this is this is something you'll want to attain to. How could I find a man that is full of discretion? In other words, he can keep his mouth shut. Full of discretion, he knows when to talk and when not to. A man full of wisdom. A man, because you know the future, you can see, you understand things. A man full of understanding. But listen at these two. A man who is efficient. That can get a job done, but a man who is proficient or a person who's proficient. Those two things are very key because Joseph was able to look out and be able to organize a whole nation. And that affected the whole world at that time because he was efficient and because he was proficient. He could get a bunch done in a day, but what he got done was right and correct when it was finished. Isn't that amazing? You think about it. Joseph went and set up 12 different locations where they were going to store the grain and all of that. So I'm not telling you, don't try to be Joseph and think, oh my God, you know, I got to go back to college and get a degree. <laughs> I'm talking about that. But I'm talking about what are you doing with your time? Because the enemy is coming in right now and he is absolutely destroying time as far as we're concerned. Every day is very important right now. We're in a different situation. We're in spiritual wars. We moved into a decade of what? Time, a decade of where things are, they're just, it's different now. It's when 2020 started, everything started and it's totally, completely different now. And so I want you to begin to realize that God wants you to think about this. Do you spend adequate time with the Lord and in the word first thing in the morning are you too busy to do that and you're going to do it at night but when you get home you got to take your kids here and you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to wash the dishes and you got to cook blah, 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 you know and the next thing you know you fall in bed at 10 or 11 o'clock because you're exhausted because you got up at 4 30 that morning don't let the devil steal time from you because you could you could spend time with god and hear one single word from him that changed everything just like that it'd just be amazing you would be amazed at what all God could do just by helping you when you spend adequate time with him. And sometimes I've, I've heard people say, well, you know, just 15 minutes, you know, just 15 minutes, 15 minutes out of 24. And yet we sit around and we listen to the news. We watch TV or whatever it is. We do movies for two or three hours. That's not going to help us a lot of times because we have got to realize right now we need to be listening to the prophets. What are the prophets saying? How do we take what is being said and put it into a timeline and begin to make the enemy give back what actually belongs to us so that we can have adequate time with our family? Do you have quality time with your family or are you just watching them run around screaming and hollering, chasing the dog or whatever? Are you spending adequate time sitting around the, the dinner table, just sitting there talking and just enjoying, maybe playing a game with them? Or do you like, well, like this all day? I'm telling you, we have to watch for this. We've got to navigate the time. And right now in our nation, you know what's coming up. That election is on the way. It's coming up. And so we've got this time. We've got to make sure that we are making, optimizing our time, making sure that our time is well spent. And whatever we're doing, we get it done and we get it done correctly. And I was just talking to them that's in here. I said, just write it down, do a things to do list. It's just amazing how that helps you just to see something and go, okay, I'm going to take care of that. And uh, I was talking to somebody, there was a, the, the, I was talking to somebody, I guess it was about a week ago, <laughs> went down to their house and I said, how long has your sink been leaking? And they said, I don't know, a couple of months. And I thought, it takes about 15 minutes to fix that. What's the deal? I haven't had time. And you know, that's not correct. You know, that that's not right. I haven't had time to fix it. Yes, you have. You haven't wanted to spend the time doing that. So when we are quick to say, I haven't had time to get this done, or I haven't had time to get that done, let's back up and say, Holy Spirit of truth, tell me what the truth is. I just didn't have, have that up on my priority list correctly where it should have been. So help me to learn how to navigate time so that the things are the most important. I get those things done, that I take care of what's very, very important. 
taking care of my finances, taking care of my family, taking care of my health, taking care of things that have to be taken care of in the house or whatever it is you have to do, that you have, taking care of your car. Don't have time to go get the oil change. Well, the next thing you know, you're going to be buying a new car because you're going to run your engine. You understand what I'm saying? I know I'm giving you a little thinking today. I hope this is helping you. But we're at a very crucial time. We're at, uh, we're at that crossroads right now in America. And I want you to think, I want you to face reality. And I want you to think about what if, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but what if something goofy happened over here? What if some wars started moving in our direction physically? I bet we'd have time to do some stuff we hadn't done before. I think that would change, you know? What, you know, back in, my parents lived during the Depression, and they lived during the war, and it was amazing how they saw time compared to how we see time today. And so when my babies were little, man, they took up a bunch of my time, <laughs> you know, because my son wanted to eat every five minutes. Boy, he was... <laughs> I grew them, he, we grew them big in Texas, let me tell you. And so, but then as I got older, I didn't have to spend quite as much time. So your time changes. I'm older, so I don't have to spend as much time with, I don't have to run around and chase my kids or my grandkids anymore. But you understand what I'm saying? Times has changed, but it has changed now. And it was said back in 2019, at the beginning of 2020, it'll never be the same. And that's true. When the war started in Kuwait, when we've had different wars, time changed and it was never the same again. And so I want you to start soberly thinking. Be sober-minded like Peter says. Your adversary, the lion, is walking around roaring, seeking whom he may devour. One of the ways that he devours is eating up our time. Eating up our time so that at the end of the day, what we've accomplished is not exactly what we needed to that is going to help us in our future. What is going to help you in your future? And I'll just use this as an illustration. I don't know I've said a lot to you today, but really and truly, I, this is a serious time that we are right now. This is a, this juncture. We're getting ready to go into Passover. Some people, as they're growing up and they're getting out of high school, they should spend their, quote, time going to college because they end up becoming doctors and lawyers and things like that that we really need. Other people go to college, they get out of college, and they go to work at the local grocery store or something. So let's think through, what do I need to do to optimize, optimize my time so that a year from now, at the end of this year, what is our nation going to look like? because of you and me. Hello, whoa, that was a bomb, wasn't it? Okay, so if everything is like it is right now, that'd be okay, it, you know? It's better than losing our freedom, but what if something else were to happen? I guarantee you, listen, I'm an older woman. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm saying about this time. You have to reckon right now today I am asking you to stop, not be afraid, and don't go like, well, I'm a jerk, and I shouldn't have done this and that. I'm, ta I'm not talking, I'm just saying right now, whoa, right now today, what are you going to do the rest of this day? How are you going to optimize your time the rest of this day? You know, sometimes you can stop and pray one prayer that alters a person's life for the rest of their life. There's been so many times that God has actually shown me how to do that. I've stopped, just boom, prayed. One time it happened with my daughter. Uh, this was many years ago, 30 years ago. Um, we were all in the kitchen, and she said something to me, and I just turned around, and I popped off the prayer, boom, 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 like that. And I, knew, I didn't think another word about it. Lah, boy, let me tell you, the enemy had something really bad planned, not even an hour later. And God was able to avert that. Do you realize that if you learn how to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you're going to pull back, stop, and go, okay, talk to my face, Lord. What do I need to do with the rest of this day? What do I need to do with the rest of this month? And what do I need to do between now and the end of this year to be able to be 
optimize my time so that I can have as much success in helping other people and helping myself so that I'm in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people the right way. That's what God is saying to you today. Learn to navigate your time and stop saying, I'm so busy. I say that, mm, no, 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 no. We got to take that out of our conversation. And we need to start saying, Father, help me. You're leading me. You're guiding me. You're directing me. You're helping me always to be at the right place at the right time. Father, you're, you're helping me. You're, you're taking me and you're showing me. This is what you need to be doing right now. This is where you need to be right now. This is what you need to be praying right now. This is, no, this is what you need to be working on. Do you realize how that, that would help you, your family? And it's possible it could help this whole nation because you might be a major key into changing things so that we can turn this nation back to the roots of righteousness. Well, how did you like your little spanking today? <laughs> Let me hear from you. Why don't you like and subscribe and share and all that stuff? And I do want to say a special thanks to all of our partners. Uh, you guys are helping us, and especially the ones that pray for me. Oh, boy, I'm so thankful for that because you're keeping me going. I have problems just like everybody else. And I have opportunities to mm, do other things every day. But God, through your prayers, is keeping me strong, keeping me healthy, and keeping me going. And I'm very, very grateful for you. So make sure you like, 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 subscribe, 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 and share, share, share. And I'm not exactly sure what all that's for, but you guys probably know. So I'll see you next time on Insight. Now, I gave you Insight today on navigating time. God bless.